It's no surprise to anyone that the Airbus A380 is a marvelous creation from Airbus. In fact, till this day it remains Emirates's favorite wide-body aircraft. Yet despite this, Airbus ceased production of the Super Jumbo in 2021 due to lack of new orders and downsizing by airlines. However, much to the surprise of anyone, the A380 made a huge comeback post-COVID, which made Emirates re-enter most of its A380 fleet back into service, but it gets even better. You see, Emirates recently revealed a huge plan for the A380 that shocked everyone. So what's going on? Well, Emirates' commitment to the A380 seems to have shone through once again. You see, Emirates have had a more than solid history with the A380 and currently operate almost 90 of them with more still to re-enter into service for them in the coming months. Indeed, Emirates has revealed big plans to operate their A380 fleet well into the 2030s and possibly the 2040s, and this came as a big shock because the A380s are quadjets in a twinjet-dominated era. This means they are considerably more expensive to operate and maintain than similar-sized twinjets. But nevertheless, Emirates doesn't seem to care and has put down significant investments into improving and maintaining their operational efficiency, including a $2 billion retrofitting program, which is the largest of its kind in the industry. Around 67 of the aircraft have been earmarked for this retrofitting, with 16 of them having been so far completed. As Emirates look to retain the A380 core of their network, various partnerships have been struck to ensure the operation of the aircraft fleet is as hassle-free as possible. These include an agreement with Collins Airspace to support its landing gear overhaul program, a partnership with Safran Landing Systems for the servicing of its nose landing gear, new wheels and carbon brakes from Honeywell and so much more. There are also plans of adding a new premium economy class which would reduce passenger capacity on the A380 from 519 to 484. Therefore, all these upgrades, which will affect every vital part of Emirates A380 fleet from the engines to the cabins, will be entirely managed by the Emirates engineering team. So why are Emirates investing so much into the supposedly outdated A380s? Well, it looks like the carrier has accepted that the 777X jets would not be quite enough and the A350-1000 aircraft from Airbus isn't a good enough option yet. In fact, if it was up to Emirates, they would have had an upgraded version of the A380 instead. You see, Airbus and Emirates have in the past discussed the production of a supersized aircraft that would suit their operation model the best and indeed enhance it. This aircraft was supposed to be called the A380neo, as it would have been an upgrade to Emirates' favorite wide body, the A380. The aircraft was expected to come with new technology to make it lighter and more efficient, and it would have been Emirates' best bet to enhance their operations. But sadly, this didn't happen. One of the major reasons for Emirates' demand for more aircraft similar in size to the A380 is that airlines in the Gulf states operate from a single large airport hub. Subsequently, plans were put on hold for the development of the A380neo despite Emirates' efforts, and so they were left with a decision to make concerning their operations. We have seen this decision recently play out when Emirates shocked everyone at the Dubai Air Show of last year. You see, since the UAE was hosting the air show, a large wide body order from Emirates was highly expected. And there was, but it wasn't what anyone expected, as Emirates booked 90 orders for the 777X, with 55 out of Emirates' latest order were for the 7799 variant and the remaining 35 for the smaller 7798 variant. The total is estimated to be worth a whopping $50 billion and taking the total orders for Emirates of the 777X to 205. This came as a big surprise to everyone because the 777X has experienced multiple delays and isn't expected to go into service until 2025. In fact, most thought that Emirates were going to select the Airbus A350 as the successor for its aging fleet of wide-body aircraft. Analysts expected Emirates to instead announce orders for the A350 and especially the A350-1000 variant, which is the larger aircraft of the A350 series, as a replacement for the A380. But that wasn't the case. 
In fact, the 1000 model of the A350 didn't receive any orders at all. So this obviously baffled analysts and enthusiasts alike, but probably none more so than Airbus themselves. Sure, Emirates didn't entirely snub the A350, since they actually made an order for 50 of the slightly smaller A350-900 variants, which are expected to arrive at their Dubai International Airport hub in July 2024 and enter into service a month later. Even Egypt Air and Ethiopian Airlines also booked some orders of the same variant with deliveries set for 2024. However, the A350-900 is smaller than the 777X and Airbus is well aware of Emirates' desire for a much larger aircraft as explained earlier. For Airbus, the A350-1000 was the perfect replacement for the A380 and they knew that if they couldn't get Emirates to come on board, they would most likely lose orders to the 777X and that's just what happened. So why did Emirates, who have been clamouring for a bigger Airbus aircraft, suddenly end up getting a Boeing instead? Well, for that, we need to look at the engines. You see, the engines on the A350s are really powerful, but the A350-1000 has a different engine to the 900, sporting a Rolls-Royce Trent XWB-97 engine compared to the 900's regular Trent XWB. Airbus's intention was for a third A350 variant, the A350-800, to have the same engine as the 900. But the 800 variant turned out to have a size clash with Airbus's own A330neo, so it was dropped. Meaning that Airbus now had an aircraft type with each variant sporting different engines. Airlines don't usually like to deal with situations where a single aircraft type would have multiple engines because it makes maintenance and repair much more tedious, expensive and time-consuming. The Trent XWB-97 engine further exacerbates this due to the issues it faces. As we said before, the engine on the A350-1000 is of the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB family and Rolls-Royce specialises in engines for wide-body aircraft, so the aircraft is actually really efficient. In fact, it is reportedly Airbus's most powerful ever engine. However, Emirates found faults with the engine, claiming that its service requirements are too high and that the time on wing performance is really low. For those who don't know, time on wing is the measure of how long an engine can last on the aircraft wing before it needs to be taken out for major maintenance operations. This is where a big problem lies for Airbus, because according to Emirates CEO Tim Clark, the figure for the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engines is only a quarter of what it should be, as their reported cycles are limited to only around 2,000 to 2,500 flight hours. He even described the engines as defective, which created some tensions during the Dubai air show, as you probably can imagine. Although the comments of Sir Tim Clark didn't sit quite well with Rolls-Royce, there is actually some truth to it. You see, the Trent XWB engine is a world-class engine under pristine conditions, but the climate in the UAE is anything but pristine. Its hot and dry climate puts the operability and durability of the Trent XWB engine under threat. So the concerns of Emirates towards the engine aren't far-fetched, as most engines would struggle in such conditions, although some more so than others. Even CFM and Pratt & Whitney engines have suffered in the past, so it's not a solely Rolls-Royce thing. But nevertheless, Gulf Airlines such as Qatar and Etihad have shown not to be too bothered by the engines as they have procured and are operating the A350-1000 of their own, 5 for Etihad and 24 for Qatar, with a further 18 orders on book. It is however possible that Emirates decided to snub Airbus due to the performance of the aircraft for the airlines. Given that statements from the Emirates CEO at the Dubai Air Show discussed a potential plan for a 3550 aircraft order of the A350-1000, this total snub makes it all the more difficult of a pill to swallow for Airbus. But as it turned out, the deal fell through not because of Airbus, but due to a troubled negotiation between Emirates and Rolls-Royce over the engine contract, which commonly happens separately to the rest of the aircraft. So why couldn't Emirates come to an agreement with Rolls-Royce? Well, it could be down to any of two reasons. The first is Rolls-Royce's new policy on engine maintenance. 
This procedure used to be undertaken by Rolls-Royce themselves, but they decided to halt the operations as they proved to be increasingly costly to run. So imagine just how much they would have to burn through with the engines on the A350-1000 being operated in the hot and dry climate of the Middle East. They would probably have to run maintenance checks more frequently than on any other engine. Also, Rolls-Royce specialize in wide-body jet engines, so when the COVID-19 pandemic came around, a lot of airlines weren't flying wide bodies anymore, and so Rolls-Royce had to make numerous layoffs due to the losses they accrued. To prevent a recurrence, they had to make some operational changes to become more sustainable in the amount of engines they produce. These terms and conditions probably dissuaded Emirates during the engine contract negotiations, but that wasn't the only reason, as the increased frequency of servicing intervals also meant that they would lose money from the sheer amount of flights that they would need to cancel. So, as it turns out, Emirates' orders for the A350-900 looked like something of a consolation to Airbus for snubbing the 1000. But if the Trent XWB-97 engines were really the problem, then why can't Airbus just offer more engine options on the aircraft? Well, Airbus have offered multiple engine options on previous aircrafts, like the A330 and the A320neo. But recently, aircraft manufacturers including Boeing have decided to focus design efforts on single engines due to the time it takes for the aircraft to get their certification, as well as the increased costs incurred as the aircraft becomes more complex. So it is unlikely that Airbus will offer a different engine option. Now Rolls-Royce are working on fixing the durability issues on their Trent XWB engines, especially improving the time on wing performance. Whether the A350-1000 would end up being one of Airbus's most successful aircrafts seems to hinge upon how quickly Rolls-Royce can fix this issue. But the clock is ticking, as one of Airbus's biggest wide-body customers, Emirates, seem to be focused more on their big A380 retrofitting program than the A350-1000 aircraft. Which seems like quite a genius move from Emirates. You see, as air traffic is expected to increase over the coming decades, it's probably been realized that this retrofitting program would save them the costs of acquiring a new fleet, which wouldn't offer all the perks of the A380, such as its legendary shower spa for first-class passengers. Additionally, Emirates might be hoping that either of the top aircraft manufacturers produce a next-generation wide-body jet that is more useful to them within the next decade or two. Because if truly, demand for air travel rises to the levels which most analysts expect over the next couple of decades, airlines operating busy routes would need larger aircraft, especially if operating into airports with landing restrictions. Jumbo jets are important to Emirates' operational model because nearly 70% of their passengers connect to other flights. But this importance is less defined to other airlines, so it's unlikely that many other airlines would push as hard as Emirates for an aircraft the size of the A380. So far, Emirates look to be alone in this journey to keep the A380 relevant, but they haven't given up trying to nudge Airbus into taking the demand seriously, even if with limited optimism. At the end of the day, it looks like Airbus is not exploring the option for an A380neo, especially as the A350-1000 almost offers similar capabilities. So it's arguably left to Rolls-Royce to improve the performance of their Trent XWB-97 engines, so carriers like Emirates can take advantage of the size of the A350-1000. There is still interest in the A350-1000, and it has in fact surpassed the A350-900 in sales for 2023 by about 30 orders. So it's possible that Emirates pick the aircraft as the successor for their A380s when they finally decide to retire them. But with the 777X not expected to enter into service soon, Rolls-Royce has the opportunity to even hasten this process. Demand for air travel is back on the rise, and many airlines are also considering bringing their A380s back into service especially for the busier routes. So Emirates' decision to extend operations of their fleet well into the next decade could very well prove to be a smart decision, especially as they wait on updates from Rolls-Royce. But we'll just have to see how it all plays out over the coming years. So there you have it. Emirates are really serious about extending the operation of their A380 fleet. 
But what do you think about them operating quadjets well into the 2030s? Will other airlines with retired A380s follow this trend? And could it spark a new desire for Airbus to actually produce the A380neo? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, take care.